Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. <laughs> ah, the teen years. Those painfully awkward times when your body's going through some changes, you're beginning to realize and fear your new life responsibilities, and for the first time, really worry about your future. Oh, and everything that doesn't go your way is the biggest deal ever. The teenage years are a moment in time that we all can relate to, and one which filmmakers have attempted with varying degrees of success to capture cinematically. When it's done poorly, you end up with cliched, stereotypical, and light cinematic junk food that has jocks and nerds and popular kids, and all that whatever. When it's done well, however, with patience and honesty, you get films like Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Say Anything, and Perks of Being a Wallflower. Those are the movies that take their characters as seriously as they take themselves, and therefore end up depicting real people on screen. People with flaws that make huge mistakes and don't always get easy answers to life's questions. For the most part, Edge of Seventeen is one of this latter type of films. While it does stray once too often into territory that makes it a little too cute for its own good, this coming-of-age dramedy fascinates with a grounded story of pain and awkwardness and anxiety that will resonate with audiences that have been there before, and they will recognize instantly that this movie knows what being a teenager feels like. And here's the thing about teenagers. They're kind of narcissists, aren't they? Everything that happens in their world is filtered through the lens of what it means to them specifically. This is a weird trait to give to a movie's protagonist, who we're supposed to root for, but it actually makes her more relatable. Haley Steinfeld, who in a typical Hollywood suspension of disbelief, we're supposed to believe is not very good looking, at least they didn't insult our intelligence by putting glasses on her, plays Nadine, a sarcastic, melodramatic teenage girl whose family still hasn't quite recovered from the death of her father a few years back. Her mother, played by Kira Sedgwick, it's safe to say isn't fully prepared for single parenthood, and her seemingly perfect brother, played in some very subtle shades by Blake Jenner, is not doing her any favors either. When Nadine catches her lifelong friend and confidant Krista in bed with her brother, and worse, when it seems like the next day that this wasn't some one-off thing but a legitimate relationship that's forming that has some legs, it throws Nadine into a tailspin and she goes on a journey of self-pity and lashing out and bad decisions that, whether her actions seem unfair or even completely inappropriate, it's always easy to follow and somewhat heartbreaking in its inevitability. Along the way, she becomes chummy with a teacher played by a droll Woody Harrelson whose character finds some interesting shades as well, and she realizes just how little she knows about people and about the world by making some poignant and heartbreaking choices along the way. I found long stretches of this film to be refreshing in their blunt honesty, and other sections, and it was just a little bit too precious, you know, Nadine does and says some things that are a bit too movie witty, like she's trying too hard to be a character, but that manufactured quirkiness is a real trait in some people, and more than being a flaw in the writing, I began to see these moments as indicators that Nadine actually thinks and acts like she's the quirky character in a romantic comedy, and that everything is just gonna work out for her if she continues to be sassy and stand her ground, and that the world will bend to her will. You know, like a real teenager thinks. But then to see her completely laid low by reality, to pick herself up and swallow her pride and open her eyes a little and begin to compromise, well, it was a beautiful thing to behold by the movie's end. I'd also like to point out that none of the movie's marketing is focusing on Hayden Zito, who plays Erwin, one of Nadine's classmates. While his performance was at first a little too shticky for me, he really grew on me and became this movie's real secret weapon. He charmed me, despite the fact that we all know where his storyline is going the second we meet him, but you could say the same thing about the movie in general, that it charmed me despite its predictability, and I award Edge of Seventeen a large bag of popcorn. This is probably the best movie about the teenage experience since The Perks of Being a Wallflower, and it tells a solid story about real, multifaceted, flawed people just trying to figure out human relationships and coming to the realization that they cannot do it alone. Edge of Seventeen features characters who grow to learn that the only way to navigate these relationships is with a group of people around you that you can trust with your true self. Hollywood loves making movies about and for teens. This is one of the good ones. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop. Click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more and support us, please, by clicking subscribe while you're there and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Edge of Seventeen in the comments as well. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel and we can do it in the Petland stock room if you want.